So as I like to teach using myself kind of as a uh, example, as you can see, since I got my uh, signature, what is it called? Autograph, my Wells Fargo autograph card. As you can see, $15,000 credit limit. And uh, what is it? Outstanding balance zero. Available credit is $14,999, but it's basically at $15,000 minus that penny. For whatever reason, it didn't come out to that penny for some reason when I paid the uh, bill off. But as you can see, uh, when I got that card, I was promised that if I spent $1,500 within three months, that I would get 30,000 bonus points, right? So as you can see, it says um, the cash advance limit. And that's something you almost never want to use. You don't want to use cash advances because usually the interest rate that they charge you for cash advances tends to be high. Um, but I'm glad it's there because, you know, one time I actually was in China and I had to use the cash advance because I needed some money. And the problem was I was having trouble communicating with one of my banks. So cash advance is actually a good thing to have on a card. It's just that it's it's like emergency only. It's something you don't really want to use. So as you can see, it says last payment was received on November 10th, 2023. And that was for $1,060 and uh, what is it? 44 cents. So as you can also see, um, it says the next statement date is 1207. And the last thing that you see right there is it says, if you spend $439.56 on purchases by, uh, what is it? Uh, February 4th, that they give you the 30,000 po bonus points. 30,000 bonus points basically comes out to um, about $300. So just as you can see, that's the card right there. That's my Wells Fargo autograph card, $15,000 limit. And um, I wanted to talk about just a couple of other credit cards that Wells Fargo is offering, which you might want to, you know, you might be interested in um, to help you win the credit game, basically. So just so you know who you're dealing with, because, you know, there's a lot of people who come on my channel. There's a lot of these people come on here, try to make fun of the passport bros. They see me, they try to tag me. I just want you to understand who you're dealing with right here. I want you to take a good look at that. I want you to point out another black man that you know who makes double six figures, owns multiple properties, and has an 850 credit score. Now, I know somebody might try to tag me to be like, oh, yeah, well, your credit score wasn't always 850. It dipped a couple of points. Yeah, that's true. And I explained that to the people who normally follow me. The reason why my score dipped was because one of my credit cards was closed because of inactivity. It was my, I believe it was my MCU Platinum card. It was closed because of inactivity. And because it was closed because of inactivity, it... In, it impacted my score because of types of credit. So as you can see, I am exceptional. Payment history, exceptional. Current debt, exceptional. Credit history, exceptional. New credit applications, exceptional. Types of credit, ex oh, well, I'm sorry. Very good, very good. So the reason why I opened up the autograph card was because I wanted to bring back up my types of credit because I lost one of my credit cards. Here's the problem. If you have a credit card, you need to use it. You can't, like these people who chop up credit cards, you can't do that. If you do that, it's going to hurt your score because what's going to happen is that card is going to, you know, disappear off your account. And when it does, it's going to take the amount of credit that it offered. It's going to take that with it. So what you really need to do is you ought to get yourself a credit card that you know you're going to use because you normally shop at a certain place. If you know that you just bought a house and you know you're going to need tools, you got to get yourself, let's say, a Home Depot card or a Lowe's card because you know you're going to use Home Depot and Lowe's because you got to get tools, screwdrivers, whatever it is. I don't know. Maybe you need a pool fixed or something. I don't know. Bottom line, this is subjective. Everybody's different, right? So long story short, you have to keep those cards open. You have to make at least one or two purchases every single year. Even if you do it at the first of the year, no problem. But you have to make purchases. Otherwise, they're going to close the cards. And if they close the cards, that actually ends up hurting your score because now your credit availability goes down. When Wells Fargo... 
Well, I'm sorry. When MCU told me they were going to close the card, I immediately went out and started buying stuff on the card. I started buying ammunition for my guns, for example, on the cards. Problem was, they were still intent on closing it. And what's funny is, they recently sent me mail asking me if I wanted to get the same card again. But I was like, wait a minute. You idiots closed the card, and now you're going to send me mail asking me to get it again? No, to hell with you. So I've moved on, and I got me a Wells Fargo autograph card. It's just that simple. That's how I operate. Now, I also mentioned in my community chat that I'm interested in getting myself a Microsoft Xbox MasterCard. MasterCard uh, Xbox MasterCard Microsoft Xbox, whatever. So anyway... um. I know I can use this card twice a year, specifically because during, uh, I believe it's December, they're going to charge me on my Visa card. They're going to charge me for Xbox Live, and they're going to charge me for Microsoft Office. So if I have nothing on that card but Microsoft Office and Xbox Live, then that's only, well, let's figure it like this. That'll be an annual fee that I normally would have paid anyway to keep my Xbox Live and my Microsoft Office accounts alive. And it'll automatically be charged to this card. It will automatically uh, bill me, and then I'll just pay it right off, right? And as you know, I do not run revolving balances. That's one of the reasons why I'm able to maintain an 850, because I don't run revolving balances month to month. If I spend money on a credit card today, I'm going to pay it off either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, as soon as it posts. So as you can see, I already mentioned this, so I'm not going to stay on this very long. Xbox MasterCard, a new way to earn value for gaming. I'm not interested in Xbox uh, 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 games right now because I have a PC and I love my PC. Um, the bottom line is with the Xbox MasterCard, you know, they, they offer you a couple of things, mostly for gaming services. They offer five times card points on eligible products at the Microsoft Store. Now, I already went and purchased, um, I purchased two of these Xbox, uh, what is this, uh, Xbox Series X controllers, and I run that right here on my PC. So I actually have two of them, in fact. Here's the other one right here. So I have um, Lunar Shift, and as you can see, I have, uh, what is this? Let me get the other one. I have uh, Robot White. So I bought these two Xbox Series X controllers so that when I want to play games, I can play my games on my PC. The PC is everything. And I'm also going to build a new PC. I'm going to have... Um, I was thinking about whether or not I should get the 14900K or if I should just wait until they have the 15900K because they're going to have an all-new motherboard. And I think I'd rather wait for the new motherboard. But right now, they have like so many sales. You can get the 14900K, the motherboard, 64 gigabytes of RAM. And you can get all that for $7.99. And by Black Friday, that'll probably go down a little bit more. But that's neither here nor there. So as you can see, the Xbox Live card gives you uh, five times card points on eligible products at Microsoft Store. Earn three times card points on eligible streaming services. This is shit that I am refuse to pay for. Uh, I don't pay for any streaming services at this house right here. I pay for it at a different house. Um... Earn three times card points on eligible dining delivery services. I don't do this Grubhub DoorDash shit. I'll drive to the store myself. I don't do this. And then it says everyday purchases earn one time card points on all everyday purchases. Now, what it doesn't say, interestingly enough, and I'd actually have to call Microsoft and ask them this. It doesn't say whether or not, it doesn't say how many points you earn on Xbox Live or Microsoft Office, which you'd think that that would be something that they'd be telling you about considering, um, you know, those services are Microsoft services, right? I would assume that it has probably something to do with Xbox and Microsoft at the Microsoft Store, but I have a recurring subscription, so I'm not sure how they handle that, but I'll ask them because the bottom line is... For me to pay for Xbox Live and Microsoft Office, I would rather do it with an Xbox Live card or a MasterCard from Xbox Live because I know that I'll have at least two payments every single year that will recur and I'll keep building points or whatever and I'll be able to keep that account open without ever having to use my regular credit cards to do it. So it's like whatever. It says a bonus of 5,000 card points after the first purchase. Um, $50 value, 5,000 points, 
three months of Xbox Game Pass. I'm not interested in that. Choice of one of five iconic designs for their card. I have to wonder, should I go with traditional classic green? Or should I go with that um, that colorful... Uh, I like, like this last one right here. Because see, I could just as easily get this one to match my Apple card. But I really actually like that one. The problem is, I kind of like OEM. So because Xbox is green and black, you know, it's like... This is like the Xbox 360 color. This is like the original Xbox color. And that right there is like the Xbox One. And I think that right there is the Xbox X. So, I don't know. It's, it's hard to choose. But I think I would either go with this one or I'd go with that one. So, you get to choose a color. And that's about it. Then it says a free online access to card members FICO score. Well, I already got that. And you already see what my FICO score is. I'm kicking ass out here. I'm the only black man you know with an 850. There's, there's rich rappers out there who ain't got 850 because their credit's fucked up. And their taxes are kicking their ass, too. They got fucked up credit, taxes, and they got child support payments. So, anyway... Zero dollars for liability. So, yeah, that's something I don't have to worry about because for the most part, the credit cards already have uh, fraud protection in them. So, yeah, once again, that's the Xbox uh, MasterCard, which you also should consider getting just in case you're trying to build it. Now, credit. what I wanted to talk about was this page right here, and I'll leave you the link to this page so you can come look at it yourself because just in case you're planning on getting a new credit card, I didn't talk about the Wells Fargo card specifically when I made the last video. So here they have zero annual fee. This is called the Active Cash Card. Earn $200 cash rewards bonus when you spend $500 in purchases in the first three months. 0% intro APR for 15 months from account opening on purchases and qualifying balance. Uh, obviously, I don't pay interest, but as you can see, it's usually 20 to 29.9. .9. Now, pretty much no credit card can go beyond 29 simply because there are usury laws that don't allow them to do that. So... $0 annual fee, that's kind of interesting, but the introductory offers are what really sucks you in. Now, for me, as you can just see, I have the autograph card, and it came to me, what, it took a week for it to get here. Earn three times points for many ways to keep life in motion. Earn 30,000 bonus points when you spend 1500 As you can see, I'm only $530 away from the uh, 1500 I'll Find something to buy. Like, for example, if I want to go into the store right now and buy a PlayStation 5 or Xbox or something. Or even a Steam Deck. I could buy a Steam Deck. A Steam Deck. The new Steam Deck comes out November 16th. Today is November 10th. I could get a Steam Deck. And, and that'll give me all the points. That'll give me 30,000 bonus points. Now, whenever you see points, all you basically have to do is take off the last two digits. It's kind of like Korean money and Japanese money. All you do is take off the last two digits, and it's $300. So you get $300 as a bonus instead of saying 30,000 bonus points. It's really $300. So basically, you're spending $1,200, and you're getting $300 back out of the $1,500. Okay? That's how it works. So I already have this card, as I just showed you. On restaurants, travel, gas stations, transit, popular streaming services, you get 3X plus 1X on everything else. Okay, fine. That's what I have. Reflect card. The reflect card says 0% interest APR for 21 months from account opening and qualifying balance transfer, 0% annual fee. Now, the, the reason why you'd want this card is because for 21 months, there's no interest, 0% intro APR. 21 months. Now, my card gave me 12, one year. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, this was the actual card that I wanted to talk about, so I'm going to come back to that one. But they also have what's called the Choice Privileges MasterCard, earned 60,000 points. So that's $600 when you spend 1000 in purchases in the first three months. Now, my card gives me $300 for $1,500 in purchases in the first three months. And this one is specifically talking about reward nights and choice hotels. But I pretty much use my Capital One Venture for travel. So this card right here seems like it's targeting travelers. It says on stays at participating choice hotels properties. But you have to stay at a choice hotel to get those 5X. I don't like that. I don't want a card that locks me into a specific hotel branch. I don't want to go to the Hilton. I don't want to go to Holiday Inn all the time. 
You know, so the thing about it is I don't want to be locked into a specific hotel, but they're telling you you only do it if you get 5x points if you go to the choice hotels and choice privileges point purchases. That can be hard and difficult to find when you're overseas, so I have a problem with that. Three times points on purchases at gas station, grocery stores, home improvement. Okay, so those things are fine, but they're basically assuming that you're the type of person who's on the road traveling and you're going to these choice hotel properties. I have a problem with that. This other card is this card on steroids, similar to the Capital One and the Capital One Venture One. This one is a $95 fee, but you get... 90,000 bonus points, which is $900 if you spend $3,000 in the first three months. This says 10x points if you go to the uh, Choice Hotels, Choice Privilege Point purchases. And it also says 5x points on, you know, gas stations, grocery stores, home improvement. Now, if you're the type of person who likes using Choice properties, no problem. This is probably going to make sense for you. But the $100 fee is where I have a problem. I don't like paying an annual fee. Just like when we had COVID, you never know if something could possibly go wrong that causes you to be able to not travel. And if something goes down where you can't travel, then you're wasting this money. It's just like all those people in those um, pyramid schemes where they were selling all these vacation plans and all this shit. I boomerang, uh, uh, world venture travels, all these pyramid schemes, where, where these uh, multi-level marketing schemes. Well, for the most part... Um, those people must have been really upset during COVID because they weren't going nowhere and they didn't go nowhere for like two years. So nah, it's no thank you. The reason why I wanted to talk about the built card, this is something that you might be interested in, especially if you're paying rent. Like if you're a renter, there's a card that lets you earn points on rent. Now, the problem with trying to pay rent on a credit card is typically that there's high fees on credit cards. The same thing goes for mortgages. If you try to pay your mortgage or your rent, they're not giving you rewards points and they're going to charge you a high fee. So what they have is they have a credit card that specifically gives you 1x points on rent payments without the transaction fee, 2x points on travel, 3x points on dining, 1x points on other purchases. Earn double points. Now keep this in mind. They normally would have given you 3x on dining, 2x on travel, 1x on the rent payment, right? But on the first of the month, you know that song? It's the first of the month. But anyway, earn double points on the first of each month. That's six points on dining, four times points on travel, two points on other purchases except rent, right? They're not trying to subsidize you with an untaxed kickback for paying your rent or mortgage. So a long time ago, they figured out that what they needed to do was make it so you couldn't get rewards points if you were paying a mortgage or rent. And they were going to charge you a huge fee to try to pay your mortgage or your rent using a credit card. Now what they have is a credit card specifically designed to allow you to pay your rent. And if you're on the first of the month, now you're getting 6% back for dining in the term of points. 6% back for dining, 4% for travel. The only problem is they're talking about the first of the month. So that means like February 1st, January 1st, August 1st, September 1st. That if you're going to take your chick out to the Cheesecake Factory, you got to do it on the first of the month. If you're going to take your family out, you're going to go to Fogo de Chao, you got to do it on the first of the month. Now, to me, that's a restriction. But what might entice people is the fact that they have a credit card that allows you to pay your rent without getting hit with the transaction fees. So that built card is kind of interesting right there. And uh, I'm just making this video to inform you. Credit is game. Like, this, some of these losers online, and I listen to them. I listen to what they're saying, but these people are crazy. You need credit more now than ever before because our money eventually is like these people. Oh, yeah, all you got to have is cash. Just pay cash. Buy the car in cash. Buy the house in cash. Yeah, eventually it ain't going to be no cash. If the Federal Reserve doesn't destroy it completely, eventually you're going to have issues with cash transactions. A lot of businesses are declining cash transaction walk into a hospital 
and try to pay a goddamn hospital bill in, in cash, cash. Yeah, and you see how that goes. They might call the cops on your ass. You're paying in credit card. And if you don't pay in credit card, they're going to send you the bill and you have to deal with your bank behind all that nonsense. They ain't trying to see nobody walk in there with a bag of dollars. It's not happening. A $30,000 bill for a cancer treatment and, and you're walking in there with uh, shekels. It's like, what are you kidding? They're going to throw you out. But anyway... Bottom line is you need credit more now than everything. You need to build your credit. You need to maintain an excellent credit score somewhere above 780. And you need to maintain your credit. Now, if you don't believe that, if you disagree with me and everything, well, then you can go right back and you can listen to people. Oh, yeah, you did pay everything cash. You pay everything cash. It's like, yeah, you know, I walk around like an alien. People don't even know who I am. They don't know what I'm talking about. They, they see me. I say, oh, they say, what do you do for a living? I say, I'm debt free. It's like, listen, you need to maintain excellent credit. And if you if you think that I'm wrong, yeah, you you keep playing. And you find out the hard way. Like, I know people who would shit credit. They try. They finally see something they want that they can't get. A house comes up for sale. They can't get the loan for it. They don't have the cash for it. The average starter house is over $500,000. And that's a starter house. Oh, you don't need a starter house. All you got to do is get a foreclosure. All you got to do is... You, 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 yeah, okay, you try doing that with the banks right now. You try going after a foreclosed property. You try going after a distressed property. You try doing that right now. The banks ain't trying to give you shit, especially if you're not showing them that you have excellent credit. Credit at this point is them asking you to prove to them that they can give you any type of loan and that you can pay it back. Because keep in mind, it's like, if the average starter house is over $400,000, chances are you ain't got that in the bank. I mean, granted, there are a couple of people who hit lotto. There's a couple of people who got rich parents and they died and they left you a lot of money and everything. Okay, yeah, that happens. Chances are you ain't that guy, though. That's chances are you ain't that guy. So all I'm saying is you need to build your credit. You need to maintain that credit. You need to keep that score over 780. So the only reason why I make videos like this is to show you, um, you know, reliable and reasonable ways to do that. So I already done showed you what it is on, on my side, because the thing about it is when you look at my credit, you already know what I got. So the bottom line is, um, you know, it is what it is. It's like either you can maintain good credit or not. And if you don't, yeah, good luck buying anything in this country.